Of course, Lincoln was born here on this hillside on February 12th of 1809. And little did anyone know at that time that this, this young child would grow up to be such an amazing person, become the 16th President of the United States, and have such an impact, not only on our country, but around the world. That is what amazes me. Working here at the Lincoln Birthplace, I get to meet people from across the country, from around the world, and they all come here to pay their respects and honor Lincoln, which shows me his impact around the world. This weekend marks the 100th anniversary of the establishment of the Abraham Lincoln Birthplace as a national park. It was House Resolution 8351 that was signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson on July 17, 1916, that established the Abraham Lincoln Birthplace National Park. We wanted to kind of recreate a sense of what has happened here at the park over the last hundred years. So we've had five presidents that have been here to the site during that time. Of course, President Theodore Roosevelt, we have a reenactor here today portraying him. My role in creating this park was quite special. You know, I came here in the year 1909, February 12th to be exact, on Mr. Abraham Lincoln's 100th birthday. And of course, I laid the counter, cornerstone for this amazing park. And of course, the national parks are very important to me, but of course, my favorite, very favorite president was a gentleman by the name of Abraham Lincoln. So I could have no greater honor during my presidency than being right here. We have a President Woodrow Wilson reenactor coming to portray and give the speech that uh, Wilson gave here when he came here to accept the deed on behalf of the American people, which was seven, uh, September 4th of 1916. Well, today we get to honor a park that saw the witness, perhaps the birth of perhaps our greatest president. And uh, even though he was a Republican, I still honor the man because he was a wonderful man. So. This is where it all began, and we're here to, to honor and celebrate that, that man, that person, that place. And of course, the last president that was here was April 23rd, 1953, and that was Dwight David Eisenhower. Abraham Lincoln was born right here where we are. I believe, according to history, he only stayed here a few years. I think he was two or three years old when his parents had to move. But this is the spot where our greatest president was born. My role today in, in today's celebration is number one, to speak of the importance of Mr. Lincoln, who was a great, great man. He held our country together in a way that was very, very important. You know, we were through the fire of war, and Mr. Lincoln came in and he preserved the Union. No more important thing could be done than that. And now the second piece of that, of course, is to celebrate what we have here, our parks, our national parks, what a treasure we have and we need to continue to have them. So my job is to make sure that we keep that enthusiasm going, the Roosevelt spirit as well as the American spirit. We need Park Service because we have so many treasures in this country, historical treasures, natural history, wonders, and we have trained wonderful people who know how to educate our citizens on, on the natural beauties and the historical beauties they encounter. So without the Park Service, we wouldn't have that, you know, we just, uh, we wouldn't have it. These places probably would go to, to uh, commercial interest. And while the commercial interest is important, we need to keep these spots open that remind us of our history, remind us of the wonderful things in our country. The, the Park Service serves a very important part. You know, we believe that our resources are inexhaustible. This is not so. We must protect them. We must do everything for our children and our children's children so that we may preserve what I, what I believe to be the most important thing that we have, nature. You know, when I was a small child, I had something called asthma. I felt like I had an elephant standing on my chest. Well, of course, it took every amount of effort I could to have to breathe. Well, the only place I really could breathe was when I left New York City out of that dust and grime and smoke, out into here, the wilderness. Ah, <sighs> breath, life itself. I knew that I needed to preserve that for future generations, and of course, the rest of the people didn't understand how important it was. I did. It's, it's part of our history, it's part of our heritage. It's who we are as a country, bad or good. And there are different sections of the Park Service that deal with the Underground Railroad. That is a very, that's not a great part of our history, but it is our history. Uh, and I think it brings out history, it brings the boys and the girls here to experience. This is where Abraham Lincoln was, was born. This is the spring when he was one or two years old that he would drink out of. Uh, this great man, this humble log cabin, 
you know, in this wilderness, and he ends up in the White House. I mean, it's a dream come true uh, for any of us, no matter who we are, no matter what race, no matter what religion, uh, our ethnic background, anything. The possibilities are great in this country. And Abraham Lincoln is a prime example of that. A hundred years of the National Park Service. And everybody says that the National Park Service is America's great idea, the greatest idea, and I, I'm inclined to agree with that. If you look at, uh, right now, I think we're up to 412 national parks, national monuments, you know, wildlife preserves, all this. But to me, it, it is about preserving and interpreting to people the fabric of America. Because our, our national parks span, you know, centuries of, of American history. Even prior to when, uh, you know, the, the pilgrims first came here. It goes back to, you know, the American Indians. So to me, it is about the fabric of America.